hi you guys it's lisa that intro gets me every single time i think it's so much fun today we're going to look through our inspiration journal and we're going to try and find some goodies and see what we can make for an art journal page i was not feeling inspired at all so let's see what happens We'll give a little flip through here and this is my inspiration journal when i see something that um, attracts my eye i put it aside and then i work on this journal and i do it by um, colors and sometimes textures that seem to go together and this page right in the beginning was what was talking to me it's very much fall here in wisconsin right now and I'm going to take out a few of these pieces um, and you'll see actually I pretty much end up taking out like all of this first page so bear with me I will show you what I have and you'll be surprised in the end that I'm feeling um, what actually ends up and this piece here that says invite autumn was really really um, inspiring me and I thought that was going to be the whole direction of the piece and actually it was until the very end and at the very end I actually lost that little piece on my desk I don't know if it got thrown away or what um, I like how the piece turned out and um, I guess that's all that matters you can't do anything about that but um, this is like I said my inspiration journal and even these little clips were giving me inspiration as I was looking through they had like a rusty uh, color and texture on them so that was um, making me excited this inspiration journal really really works for me and if anyone is interested in a little um, video on how to go ahead and make this inspiration journal I definitely can go ahead and do that for you it's a very very fun process I learned the process by watching Lolly Mill and I can link to her um, YouTube channel also she basically has paid classes um, so you would have to actually sign up for some of her workshops but I really like how she shared the information on her inspiration journal and I use it all the time and it definitely gives me good inspiration when I am needing that so you can see I'm taking like pretty much this whole um, page out and I'm putting it on a tray and I'm setting it aside and I just wanted to show you how I got started on this art journal page I will um, go ahead and speed it up I'm just doing a little flip through here for my inspiration journal and I will go ahead and speed this up so I'm not boring you so I will be back shortly
Okay, I wanted to pop in and just show you this page here. You see that there's a lot missing. Well, I took that out and I made a video um, with the inspiration from that page. And I'll show you the art journal page here that I made with that. You can see it's all wintry and cold. And um, in this art journal, you can see this is the... Um, art journal page that I made with a lot of that inspiration. It was from winter to spring is what I was showing in this layout. And I'll link that above here so you can see the whole process of that. So I will continue on through this art journal um, inspiration page. Um, now, I really, really like this um these colors on this page also. There's just um, some great colors here. And um, I just wanted to go ahead and show you that book. I really, really like it. And again, leave comments below and I will go ahead and make that for you. Now, this is the art journal that I'm going to work in. And it's a handmade journal, and I really like the papers. It can take a lot of water, and I'm thinking that might be the option that's going to happen today. So I chose this page here, and I wanted my book to lay flat, my art journal book to lay flat. So I'm going to show you how I solved that. I go ahead and open it so it lays flat, and then I didn't want that back um, art journal page to get all messed up as I am moving the art journal book around. So I'm going ahead and using some press and seal. Now this is a little um, quick tip that I came up with because I didn't want to wreck that art journal page. So I'm covering it with press and seal and that works really, really well. Um, as you're working in your journal, you just don't want that um, beautiful page to get um, damaged in any way. So I go ahead and cover that and I um, put some clips on and then my art journal book will lay flat. So what do you think about that? <laughs> Good tip for you free of charge. Now, um, you may have um, noticed I have a little bit of lighting problem. Well, that is going to get fixed in a jiffy here because I actually purchased some new lighting for my desk. I made a real nice change to my videoing. So this little portion, and I believe maybe the next little portion is going to be the last time you're going to have to see this dark videoing. I'm um, doing this portion of the video very late at night and the lighting was very, very bad in my craft room. And um, I apologize for that, but bear with me. Of course, things are getting better, um, working out all of the problems. And you will see here in just a short time of this video that my lighting gets much, much better with my new lights that I got. I really, really like it. So I'm trying to decide how to get rid of that blank page here. And what I came up with was using some of these leave stencil, this leave stencil from Sean Petit, and I will link it below. Uh, I believe it's called Falling Leaves. I'm using my brown Stabilo All pencil, and I'm going to go around and um, very loosely um, use this stencil to create leaves in the background on this art journal page. I'm going to do a double spread for you. So there is a lot of um, different techniques and I'm going to speed 
uh, that through very quickly for you. I'm going to try and get these leaves to run a little bit with that um, fixative. So I did all of the leaves um, with my brown Stabilo pencil and I wanted to see if I sprayed this fixative, which is a liquid and again a spray, if it would activate the leaves enough to make them run a little bit. And as you can see, um, it's intensifying the um, lines, but it is not making that ink spread as I really wanted it to. I really wanted it to kind of drip and run a little bit. So plan B, I grab my spray bottle and I'm going to use just plain water and we're going to solve that here I was trying to make them run with my paintbrush but it wasn't working either and now we're just going to add regular water and I have the art journal um, tipped and you can see what's happening there I wanted them to just kind of move a little bit and look at that how beautiful but now we have to remember that the brown stabilo pencil is water reactive um, because of course it's um, activating with water I'm going to dry it and I'm going to dab up some of those drips that are running a bit too much and then we're going to seal the piece um, with some I believe I use matte medium we will watch this together and find out and then we're going to make the most amazing background I think that I have ever made so stay tuned here and I will catch you in just a moment Look at this beautiful background. I absolutely love it, you know, and I'm just like, oh, what can I do next? I was on a roll. Um, it was really, really fun to do all of those leaves. Now, the leaves are sealed because we used the clear gesso as the activator for the Neo to uh, Neo Colors 2s, the the 
water soluble crayons we'll just call them that and so now i'm picking out a few different colors and i'm thinking about some blues and grays for the background because right now it is windy and rainy and um getting dark out real early and the leaves are just blowing all around outside of my craft room windows and so that was what was making me think I should do the background just a little stormy and yet yeah, a little bit of blue and then some gray so I'm using those Neo 2 Neo Color 2 crayons which are water soluble and I'm just lightly putting color on the background and I'm using um, a blue and a gray and then I'm going to activate this again with the clear gesso and if it doesn't move enough I'm going to use water and then um, activate that and move that color around so I'm going to speed this up for you again so that we can keep on trucking and I'll be right back look at this background huh i'm going to use some gesso and my brayer and i'm going to hopefully not wreck this um i'm putting some gesso on my brayer and i'm going to push the leaves a little bit back into the background now this is giving me a little bit of anxiety because i really love the um i love the background as it is so i was um just thinking um about some journaling in the background i needed to get a few things off my mind and so i just grabbed a pencil and i'm lightly lightly journaling in the background um, a little bit of um, thoughts that i had and i just wanted to go ahead and do that and then i'm going to push it in the back uh, background with my gesso so I will have that here I'll speed it up for you and we will continue on
here we go. Background is all dry. What do you think? Oh, I was really afraid to cover up those leaves because I was really loving it. But you can't get too attached with your backgrounds. I've heard that many, many times by watching other creators. So what I was thinking is some pumpkins. This is definitely pumpkin season right now. Here's a word grateful. I'm using two of the stencils by Sean Petit and I will link those below for you. And I was trying to decide what I'm going to do for focal points. So I was grabbing out some pattern paper and in orange, oranges in rust colors. And I don't have very much pattern paper, maybe um, uh, maybe less than 200 sheets, I bet. Not very much at all. So here's how I created those pumpkins. I just used a pencil and I created the pumpkins using the lines on the stencils. And I drew them on the pattern paper and then I went ahead and cut them out. You can see I don't use all the pattern paper, but I was just trying to match colors by grabbing them out. Now this is a piece from my stash and believe it or not it was a, a piece of a flower and I thought it looked like corn husks. You know how you have that in the fall you have those uh, corn stalks and I thought that really really looked like that. Here also in my stash I found this um, napkin that has trees tree branches on it um, absolutely gorgeous and it was speaking to me so I went ahead and pulled the um, different plies apart I'm just using the one ply with the um, trees on it and I'm taking off that blue decorative border I'm not gonna throw it away though because it is very very beautiful and I think it will really really look great in another project beautiful I put that in my um, I call it my stash basket all my scraps and things go in this big basket that I keep to the left of me in my craft room so when I need inspiration or I need something I'm not sure what I'm kind of stuck I will dig out that basket and just go ahead and give a look through now I am pulling this napkin apart I'm just giving it some organic edge and I wanted to be careful um, not to cover up all those leaves in the background because I really 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 love them and it's taken me a long time to do um, not that I didn't enjoy it I absolutely enjoyed the process and that's what it's all about right but I did want to have these trees in the background also because it seems to pull the piece all together now I'm just um, cutting ripping excuse me ripping down the uh, napkin a little bit more and trying to audition it on my piece to see where everything is going to lay and I think I have a plan here's my pumpkins I wondered if I needed another pumpkin um, I did not go with three and I know that you're supposed to go with odd numbers but um, this was really talking to me here, so I'm going to go ahead and put this piece all together, and you'll see me working on that. Uh, again, I'm going to uh, put on some music for you and work through the process and um, just enjoy how it all comes together. I really, really enjoyed it.
Wow, wow, wow. How that has changed, huh? Everything is stuck down now and dry. And I was wondering, I thought maybe I needed to put this one more piece of napkin here. I'm just trying to see if I wanted it or not. I decided that I did. And I'm putting it right over the collage elements. Now, if you can remember, the collage papers were papers that came right out of my inspiration journal. So that's kind of neat that some things did make it into this piece that came out of my inspiration journal. So I was pretty happy with that. I'm using my matte uh, medium, my matte medium to put down my napkin and my collage pieces and it gave it a really really good stick so I was happy on how this all turned out I can't even believe the transformation of this piece it is just amazing how things just change from a leaf background to having no idea to working a few um, minutes here and there um, I worked around making dinner and having dinner, leaving it dry, coming back, and every time I looked at it, I was like, wow, how did that happen? So pretty exciting and pretty fun piece. I hope you're enjoying it. I'm trying to speed it up so it does not take a long, long time, and I'm going to do so again here. And what I'm going to use is, um, again, my Neo Color crayons and I'm going to add color to the bottom. I'm going to use my General's charcoal pencil. I'm going to add shading and I'm going to speed this up again and I'm also going to use some titanium white up on the top. There is some of that journaling that was really, really standing out and I didn't want everyone to, you know, know what I was writing or thinking about. That is a private part of the art journaling process, but I did leave in the um, background and you can see that through is celebrating love and the word stronger. Um, those were the ones that kind of ended up standing out, standing, standing, standing up through the background there, and I left it uh, shine through. So working through the process, speeding this along, I will be right back again. I am absolutely loving how this is turning out. We're almost done. Thanks for sticking around to the end. We're going to add some finishing touches. I'm going to give you some close-up photos at the end. And I would love some thumbs up if you liked this video. I would love some comments. I would love um, subscribers. Maybe share the video with someone that you think may enjoy it. But 
tell me what you think. You know, do you want to see more art journaling processes? Do you want to see products? What would you like me to do? Here I'm using my titanium white and I'm just using my finger, adding some white highlights to those pumpkins. And I used my archival ink in jet black and I stenciled on the word grateful up there on the top left with my um, stencil brush, which is actually just a makeup brush from the dollar store. Um, I'm going to be going to the dollar store this next weekend and see if I can find some cool supplies for my uh, art. And I will probably do a, a haul video on our uh, Facebook group, which is Everything Paper and Glue. I would love to have you. Um, we have small little videos like that. I call them stash builders. Right now I'm using my black Posca paint pen and I am filling in the little um, openings of the stencil. I don't really care for those openings when you stencil something. I like to have that um, word and the letters all joined together. And that's just my preference. You definitely don't have to, but I like to do it. I feel that it looks a little more complete for me. So what other, um, what other um, finishing touches? I do a black marabou crayon and I go all the way around the edges to give it a nice black border. And I also saw some of these, we're calling them corn husks. Um, that I did not go around and I did not go around the stem of the pumpkin on the right. So I'm just giving a look over the piece. I'm adding some of those finishing details. Like I said, fixing the pumpkin there. I kind of went over the black area. I'm just touching that up a little bit. And like I said, I hope that you liked this art journal page. I was trying to make it smaller for you. I know it's a little bit lengthy, but enjoy. And there's pictures at the end. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful fall day.